MGTOW Mafia is back. We're stronger than ever. Being that it's Valentine's Day today, I'm gonna give you a free gift to give all the females. And if you are a female listening to this, you've been exposed. The party's over, your gig is up. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. Everything from erroneous rape accusations, false sexual aggression, violence committed by females, murder committed by females. So in honor of Valentine's Day, let's begin. First and foremost, false rape accusations are very common. Statistics on politicized issues like this are often untrustworthy. Many police departments resolve even the most obvious cases of false rape accusations by sending both parties home. So you will never hear about it. The accusations themselves will make it to the media, but once they are found false and charges are dropped by police, you never seem to hear about it. Why do these erroneous fake rape accusations keep repeating and going on and on? I'll tell you why. There are no penalties for women who bring false rape accusations. A false rape accusation is not merely an attack on a man's character. It's an attempt to kidnap, imprison, torture, and perhaps murder an innocent man. It's a profoundly evil act and yet there are no consequences for a woman who makes false rape accusations. Making a false rape accusation or even a false sexual aggression charge is worse than the crime itself. An aggravated sexual abuse in the first degree is a very serious charge. It's a felony in the state of New York and it's punishable for five to 25 years in jail. So I'm figuring a female who makes a false accusation against a male for rape and sexual aggression should get at least the maximum amount of time in jail with no good time off. Next, the definition of rape is subjective. Historically, if a girl is passed out drunk and a guy has sex with her while she's unconscious, that's considered rape. But what if a girl is just pretty drunk? What if the man has also been drinking? Are they both guilty of rape? In a sane world, drunk people would be held responsible for whatever decisions they made while intoxicated. Drunk people still have agency. Otherwise, the I was drunk excuse would always be a valid defense for drunk driving. The idea that a girl can wake up in the morning after the night of enthusiastic sex and claim that she was too drunk to consent is absolutely retarded. The feminists are feeding you garbage. They will make a false claim that one in every five college girls are raped or sexually assaulted. But what these feminists don't want you to know is that the research was based on a flawed internet survey. There was never a representative sample. And the sample that they did take had a low response rate. And the questions were worded so vaguely. Studies in the past were also wrong because they were based on the same methodology and techniques as this 2%, 8% study. Another rape statistic that I recently learned about was from the Federal Bureau of Statistics. They're claiming that one in 53 college girls are raped. It's a lot less than the previous statistics, but I still think it's rather high and I'm not sure of their methodology. If any of you wanna make a comment about that down below by the comments, feel free. There was another study done back in 2010 called the False Allegations of Sexual Assault Study. It was about false allegations of sexual assault. And the analysis was from a 10-year period reported cases by David Lysak and others, published in a scientific journal called Violence Against Women. The data came from an unknown police department of an unknown university from the years 98 through 2007. The author's methodology came from a single unknown 136 cases, once again from an unknown department located on some unknown university campus. There's one other very famous study that's all over the internet. It's called the 2% 8% study by Susan Brown Miller. She was a feminist and this study is totally baseless and flawed. It's based on a public remark said by a judge at the bar association in a meeting. That's all it was. A meta-analysis by Romney back in 2006 suggests that between 10 and 50% of rape allegations are false. Another person by the name of Kanan in 1994, 
arrived at an estimate of 40% using a different methodology. In my personal life, I know a woman who volunteers to support and counsel so-called rape victims at a university. And she told me that she believes all of them. Let me tell you something, brother. The problem with believing all of these feminists who say they get raped is inquisitorial, which means that we are all guilty until proven innocent. But the opposite is the truth. We are all innocent until proven guilty. Now, there probably are some rapists out there that rape women and rape men. But the fact is that most men want to protect women. They do not want to sexually assault or rape a woman. I just got done proving to you that there are many women who create false rape accusations. But to bust this myth just a little bit further, I want to go over the reasons why women lie and create false rape accusations. Maybe they want to explain away an embarrassing sexual encounter. Maybe they were just drunk. Maybe they were disturbed and they're seeking sympathy. Or maybe they just want to get revenge because the guy didn't want to see her the next day. They took too many feminist seminars and they were taught to believe that they were raped because they were drunk or later they regretted it. But now it's time to learn the truth about female violence and murder. Female murder and violence techniques include throwing things, using a gun, using a knife, and poisoning. More than 830,000 men fall victim to domestic violence every year. A man is a victim of domestic abuse every 37.8 seconds in America. These numbers are not inconsequential and the frequency is far from insignificant. Female initiated domestic abuse. Our next study will be from back in 2001 done by the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent Health, it's still relevant today, collected data about the health of nationally representative sample of 14,322 individuals between the ages of 18 and 28. The study also asked subjects to answer questions about romantic or sexual relationships in which they had engaged during the previous five years and whether those relationships had involved violence. So from this information, researchers found that of the 18,761 relationships, 76% were nonviolent and 24% were violent. Of that 24% that were violent, half had been reciprocal, half had not. Reciprocal meaning that there was violence inflicted by both parties. Although more men than women, 53% versus 49%, had experienced non-reciprocal violent relationships, more women than men, 52% versus 47%, had taken part in ones involving reciprocal violence. Now here is where the females really get exposed. This statistic was undoubtedly the most striking in committing acts of domestic violence. More women than men, 25% versus 11%, were responsible. In fact, in the 71% of non-reciprocal partner violence instances, the instigator was the woman. Well, let me tell you something, brother. The Department of Psychology at California State University, Long Beach, compiled a bibliography that examined 286 scholarly investigations, 221 empirical studies, and 65 reviews and or analysis demonstrating that which we are reluctant to discuss. The uncomfortable reality that women are as physically aggressive or even more so than men in their relationships and with their spouses and male partners. These are not studies conducted by the rabid anti-women men's groups or right-wing think tanks. They are conducted by organizations like the Centers for Disease Control, National Institutes of Health, the American Sociological Association, Psychology of Women Quarterly, and the American Journal of Public Health, to name a few. Feminists paint men as bad people. Men can get in trouble just by looking at a woman the wrong way. But statistically, the vast majority of child murderers are committed by women. This doesn't even include all the abortions that go on. Most men today are simply simps. 
but men are force fed and told in one breath to shed their misogynist, sexist leanings, and at the same time they're told to man up and take the blows dealt to them by their female partners. Men are being told phrases like, you throw like a girl, you hit like a girl. These phrases have chauvinistic underpinnings, while simultaneously being told, it doesn't matter she hits you, because essentially, she hits like a girl, and you can handle it, big boy. So while we recognize there is often a difference in the physical impact between male and females hitting each other, we completely disregard the emotional and psychological impacts, and often the physical harm of a woman hitting a man, whether it be with her hands, feet, object, knives, guns, poison, whatever. Additionally, some researchers estimate that about 20% of men who call law enforcement to report an abusive spouse or partner are in turn arrested for domestic abuse. The sad thing is when women murder their husbands, they are sober and they know exactly what they're doing. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics fact sheet, about 66% of husbands who killed their wives had been drinking compared to 37% of the wives. 22% of the husband defendants had been using drugs compared to the wife defendants. We live in an upside down world when it comes to punishment. Females get punished far less than males do for committing the same crimes. 30% of the wives either do not get prosecuted or they are found not guilty for murder charges, while 13% of husbands are not prosecuted or found not guilty on murder charges. According to the data given by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime worldwide, 78.7% .7 of homicide victims are male, and in 193 of the 202 listed countries or regions, males were more likely to be killed than females. The homicide rate is per year per 100,000 inhabitants. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics fact sheet, the average prison sentence for husbands was much longer, 16 and a half years for husbands and six years for wives. Feminists, your party's over. The gig is up, you have been exposed. You know, I may not be able to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders, but I know that someday this world will be a better world. It's going to get back to the good old days. And I know that many of you will share videos like this one and many others that are on YouTube. So I'm going to say so long for now. This is Moses from MGTOW Mafia. Bye-bye now. I'm out. <laughs>